I think the one of, you know, going back to the earlier presentation about new adjuvant therapy, I think one of the biggest advances in melanoma in the last couple of months has come out of my colleague, Dr. Sapna Patel's work uh, in SWOG, in the study SWOG 1801, which clearly demonstrated that neoadjuvant immunotherapy improve event-free survival. So in this pivotal study, randomized phase two, the use of neoadjuvant immunotherapy, pembrolizumab given for three doses over nine weeks, improved event-free survival over the same drug given adjuvantly. So clearly a benefit for what we all know now to be true, that giving any drug immunotherapy neoadjuvantly results in better outcomes compared to adjuvant therapy, assuming that is, uh, that patients do actually make it to surgery. Uh, one of the key takeaways from this was the proportion of patients that did not make it to surgery, a very small proportion of patients, stressing that even though this approach is very efficacious, that the schedule of any immunotherapy, the duration of therapy, and the patient selection are key factors that we need to coalesce on before we move this into uh, a more definitive uh, platform. And along those uh, Along those lines, I'd like to highlight the results from the PD-1 Vlatlamab study published by my colleague Roya Maria in Nature a couple of weeks ago uh, that showed a very high pathologic complete response rate for this combination. And ours as well, uh, showing a very high pathologic complete response rate and near complete response rate, suggesting that these are all very, very exciting combinations that deserve to be considered in this setting. Uh, some of the agents that are very efficacious in the PD-1 refractory space include the use of T-cell therapies. So us and other groups are looking at T-cell therapies, uh, both uh, looking at TCR-based T-cell therapies that are HLA-82 restricted, such as the agents from uh, immunocore and Uh And in that uh, area, I'd like to highlight the frame targeting TCRs, uh, the results of which have been presented relatively recently by uh um, at ESMO by my colleague, Dr. Omid Hamid, and also will be present an update of which will be presented uh, uh, later this year uh, and early next year as well. So we've got some very exciting data looking at uh, TCR-based therapies that have clearly demonstrated responses in the refractory setting. Uh, however, these are restricted to HLA-82 patients. Uh, outside of these patients, TIL therapy is also very uh, impressive. And we expect that the uh, TIL product from Iovance, Lifeluso, will, which has demonstrated a robust response rate of about 29 to 35% in the refractory setting, may see some, uh, uh, is currently headed to the FDA. And we hope to see, uh, we await you know, the results of the regulatory implications of this uh, decision. Uh, we hope that this will be an option that uh, becomes available for our patients in the near future. Uh, outside of this, there are very, very, very exciting agents uh, that are uh, in the landscape. I think one key agent to highlight are novel CTLA-4 inhibitors. Uh, the key thing about CTLA-4 inhibitors, inhibitors is that moving on from the very first drug that was developed in immuno-oncology, uh, as a monoclonal antibody CTLA-4 2012 regulatory approval. And now almost a decade later, we have novel CTLA-4 inhibitors where we've got agents that were engineered by tweaking the FC receptor to enable binding to low affinity receptors. And what you're seeing is that uh, the augmentation of uh, immune synapse activity through FC augmentation has resulted in unprecedented activity, even in non-traditional tumor types. So for example, I'd like to highlight the data from Magenis, uh, where they showed uh, with Dr. El Kuwari at ESMO GI a 24% response rate in microsatellite stable colorectal cancer, an additional 49% of patients with stable disease for a total of 71% of patients with some kind of response or disease stabilization in microsatellite stable colorectal cancer. You will also see, I think, data at SITSI looking at the CTLA-4 inhibitor from BMS, CTLA-4-NF data that I was involved with, uh, also showing some very exciting results. So I think that the novel CTLA-4 inhibitors are very, very, very exciting. Lots of interesting data coming out, both at SITSI and over the next coming months, and uh, several agents from several different companies that potentially uh, will be pivotal.